As I was saying, Charlemagne did not know how to read or write himself, uh, but he understood the importance of uh, literacy, uh, particularly for the clergy, and among the clergy, particularly for the bishops, uh, the great administrative and spiritual uh, officers. He believed that they at least ought to be literate, and he uh, set up a program uh, in his palace school, as I think I said, uh, to bring about the literacy of uh, the most important officers uh, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the church. Civilization benefited also. Uh, if, if the church had benefited uh, from finding in Charlemagne uh, a friend in a very high and powerful place, uh, a later uh, friend, uh, a later figure in a uh, high and powerful place who needed the blessing of the church, turning the Charlemagne situation around, uh, was William I, the Duke of Normandy, uh, who in the middle of the 10 hundreds uh, had designs on a cross channel that is from France across the channel to the island of England and claiming the Anglo-Saxon kingdom of England as his own. Uh, there were a lot of complicated reasons for that, uh, but it was uh, pretty much an unheard of thing for one Christian king to go uh, to war, a war of invasion, clear aggression against another uh, Christian king. And William believed he needed the blessing of the church uh, in order to uh, put a religious veneer, a veneer of correct religious uh, spirituality on it. And he was able to get it uh, from the uh, then uh, Pope. Uh, a friend in a high place needed the church's blessing and the church was there uh, to provide it. Uh, the conquest of England completed at the, begun at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Uh, brought England completely and totally under the sway of the Roman Catholic Church uh, and also brought England, uh, the English-speaking world, face-to-face, uh, -face, so to speak, with the uh, linguistic legacy of Latin. Uh, French, uh, which the Norman conquerors spoke, is a Roman-based or Romance language, uh, and it is by way of French uh, that so that, that the 75% of the words in our vocabulary in English uh, derive ultimately from uh, Latin. As we said earlier, all roads lead to uh, Latin. All roads, I'm sorry, lead to Rome. Uh, and uh, this, is a good, this is a good example of that. From, from this point on, England is part of the mainstream of Western civilization is the point I'm trying, point I'm trying to make. Uh, last, uh, the church saved civilization, or maybe I should say uh, proudly displayed uh, the civilization it had saved uh, in a three-continent-wide power, a, a three-continent-wide display of military and spiritual uh, power. Uh, this display of power uh, we know as the uh, Crusades. And for the Crusades, we're now in new material. So for the Crusades, in the first handout that you have, I, I, I'd like you to turn to the first page of the first handout, which is page 343. Uh, here you, we're in territory that you haven't yet read, uh, and I'm going to go a little slower uh, introducing the new material. The word crusade comes from the word cross crooks in Latin. Uh, a crusade is a taking up of the cross or shouldering a heavy burden for a spiritual purpose. Uh, that would make Jesus the first crusader who carried his cross to the execution site as well as the, as, as well as the uh, nearly the first Christian uh, martyr. Uh, the burden that Pope Urban II uh, asked Christians to shoulder, take up, 
uh, in the late 1000s, 1095 to be exact, uh, amounted to Western Christianity's counterattack uh, on the second of the two great barbarian waves of invasion that have uh, swept over Europe. The first wave was the Germanic invaders who overran Rome. Uh, that's now behind us. And we've saved civilization from that. But the second wave uh, was the uh, wave of the armies of Islam, uh, whose uh, fervor and fanatical fighting spirit uh, matched, that, that it matched that of the legions of Rome. And, and seem to be just as uh, irresistible. Uh, the rise of Islam uh, across North Africa, throughout the Middle East, encompassing all of Asia Minor, two continents completely, uh, swallowed up the birthplaces uh, of Christianity and uh, became a great obstacle in what had been a uh, medieval institution, uh, the institution of the uh, pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is a long, difficult, and dangerous journey which a man takes on voluntarily uh, for the purpose of purifying his soul. A man on a pilgrimage is a pilgrim. Uh, pilgrims undertook long, difficult, dangerous journeys to places of historical interest in the rise of Christianity uh, where it was thought uh, a man's soul could benefit from the physical danger he had overcome and the physical exertion uh, he had laid uh, out uh, to uh, accomplish it. Uh, pilgrimage was a, uh, a great display of medieval faith in the age of faith. Uh, the greatest of all the pilgrimage sites, of course, was the Holy Land. And, and you may be uh, in a church where a church group uh, has made its own pilgrimage to the Holy Land, not the difficult, dangerous uh, journey on foot, uh, with uh, no arms or money in their pockets that uh, medieval pilgrims made. But the Holy Land has always had a pull uh, on, on Christians, a combination of the power of history uh, and faith. Uh, pilgrimages had flourished. Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims every year visited the Holy Land from Europe, from the 500s, the 600s, 